Hi everyone, welcome to the WSO2 Identity Server multi-tenancy training video. In this video, we are going to learn about the usage and benefits of multi-tenancy. Let's begin by understanding what multi-tenancy is. Multi-tenancy is the utilization of a single software instance by multiple user groups or tenants that share common access and certain specific privileges. If you consider the difference between multi-tenancy and single-tenancy, with single-tenancy, each tenant will have separate applications and separate databases, whereas with multi-tenancy, all the tenants will be sharing the same application and database. Multi-tenancy enables to share the same application and code, run on the same operating system, use the same hardware and data storage mechanisms, and isolate the customer specific data and traffic so that different customers do not have access to each other's data. Some examples of multi tenancy are WSO2 Cloud, Gmail and any G Suite application, Salesforce, and AWS. For example, instead of deploying WSO2 Identity Server in your own machine and setting up databases on your own, you can simply register yourself as a tenant in the WSO2 Identity Cloud and start using WSO2 Identity Server features. Even though you will be sharing the same runtime as other tenants, let's say you create users in your WSO2 Identity Cloud tenant space. Those users will only be visible to you. This takes away the responsibilities of maintaining the deployment on your own. This also means that if you are the one providing a service to tenants, you do not have to spawn a separate deployment for each tenant. You can simply reuse the existing deployment. If you compare multi-tenancy with multi-instance architecture, with multi-tenancy, you will be running the same application instance. Whereas with multi-instances, you will be running multiple instances of the same application. Multi-tenancy reduces deployment cost drastically when there are multiple customers using the same application or service. So in such scenarios, multi-tenancy compared with other architectures is a low-cost approach with optimal resource utilization and less maintenance overheads. On the downside, you have to handle the multi-tenancy flows in the code level, so it adds an extra complexity to the application development and maintenance of the source code. Deploying applications used to be costly due to their monolith behavior. They had high CPU and RAM requirements, specialized tune-up requirements with application servers, etc. Manual provisioning of multiple infrastructures, all of which made the deployment process complicated. However, the world is now heading towards microservices where instead of having one thick server, the architecture has small modularized services. With cloud-native applications, you can create applications that are built with services, packaged in containers, deployed as microservices, and managed on elastic infrastructure through agile DevOps processes and continuous delivery workflows. With this architecture, you can easily deploy and go into production. Developing and deploying microservices is simple and needs minimal resources when compared with deploying large monolith instances. Microservices require minimal resources to run and can scale up or down in real time based on traffic. Cloud native ecosystems provide all the tools for all the deployment requirements such as continuous integration and continuous deployment, commonly known as CICD, deployment orchestration, and observability. As you can see, when handling multiple customers, for monolith applications, following multi-tenant approach is a clear win compared to single-tenant multi-instance approach. But with the cloud-native technologies, you can build applications which are simple to develop and easily deploy. So for new products, this could be the best approach to follow. We have now come to the end of this training video. Let's have a quick recap of what we learned from this training. First, we got a quick introduction to multi-tenancy and its key attributes. Then, we learned the difference between a multi-tenancy architecture and a single-tenancy architecture. Next, 
we learn the difference between a multi-tenancy architecture and a multi-instance architecture. Finally, we got to know about cloud-native applications and the benefits of using them. If you have any questions or need further clarification, feel free to get in touch with us through the following channels. Our email is iam-dev at wso2.org In Stack Overflow, type with wso2 or wso2is And our Slack channel is wso2is.slack.com Thank you for watching this video.